our next goal is to recapitulate the closed contour integral in terms of the original integral itself. To this end, we draw our attention to the principal value integral along the negative semi axis. To compute it, we need to introduce an appropriate parameterization consistent with the choice of the regular branch of our log function. As you probably remember from our previous example, the imaginary part of the log function of the negative semi axis is pi. So log of minus x equals log of x plus i pi. Therefore, the necessary parameterization of the negative semi axis is z equal rho times e to i pi. This way, we write for the principal value integral. The integral from plus infinity to zero, log rho plus i pi over rho squared minus one, zero. Here watch carefully for the limits of integration. It's from plus infinity to zero. That's because we integrate over the modulus of rho and it changes from plus infinity to zero. So let's split this integral into two parts and interchange the limits of integration. So we have from 0 to plus infinity log rho over rho squared minus 1, 0 plus i pi, the integral from 0 to plus infinity, 0 over rho squared minus 1. Now let's have a closer look at these two expressions. The first expression is a reminiscent of our original integral. It's a principal value integral, but let's, let's have a closer look at the integrand itself. You immediately notice that the integrand doesn't have a pole on the integration contour. In fact, this whole integral is simply our original integral recast in terms of new integration variable rho. On the other hand, the remainder term is indeed singular at point rho equals 1, so all the singularities are absorbed into the second remainder term. And by the way, the integrand of the second term is purely real, as well as the contour integration, since it runs along the real axis. So the whole integral is real, and it's multiplied by i pi. So the whole expression consists of the first part, which is purely real, and the remainder term, which is purely imaginary. So our goal is partially achieved. Our closed contour integral is now equal to double the original integral, plus i pi times the principal value integral from 0 to plus infinity du rho over rho squared minus 1, and plus the integral along the upper semicircle run point negative 1. Now let's compute our semicircular integral. Well, as any integral taking along the half of the circle round the first order pole, it's equal to 2 pi i times the half of the residuum up to minus sign, because this integral is taken in the clockwise direction. But let me take it for you one more time. So the suitable parameterization z equals negative 1 plus epsilon. And epsilon itself is parameterized as modulus of epsilon times e to i phi. Therefore, dz equals to i d phi epsilon. The expansion of the integrand is presented on the slide already. So we have for this semicircular integral is the integral of f of negative 1 plus epsilon dz, which yields the integral from pi to 0 and minus i pi over to epsilon, epsilon i d phi. And taking the integral over phi, we have pi squared by 2 with minus sign. So our initial goal is achieved. The closed contour integral is expressed as 2i minus pi squared by 2 plus the remainder term i pi, the principal value integral, 0 over rho squared minus 1. On the other hand, we can express this integral using Cauchy residue theorem, which is simply the sum of the residues inside our closed contour. But there are no poles inside our contour, and hence no residues, so our closed contour integral is in fact equal to zero. And that's it, we are done. The real part of the left hand side is 2i minus pi squared by 2 is equal to zero, which yields our original integral, 
i is equal to pi squared by 4. While the imaginary part gives us the remainder term as a bonus. So, in fact, our principal value integral, surprisingly, is equal to zero. And some concluding remarks. This is our first example of the deformation of the contour coming across the singularity. It's an extremely important phenomenon in complex analysis. It's also quite widespread in theoretical physics. It's enough to say that in quantum mechanics, the contour bending around the singularity describes the scattered particles. You will see the full grandeur of this effect in our more advanced course in the future. Of course, now we just brushed it slightly. But I do hope that you enjoyed it, and I do hope to see you soon on our final example.